So, I'm on Facebook and this girl from my high school tags me into this game, this Facebook game. The top 10 most influential albums in your lifetime. Um, yeah, so I figured I'd share it with the Christian atheist community because I know you're all so curious. I know you are. I know you're so curious about my musical taste. I know. I know that you are. I know you are. You don't have to keep telling me. I know. That's why I'm sharing it. So, let's break it down for you. Actually, Mr. Oso85, maybe, but he's about the only one. <laughs> um, yeah, shout out to you, Mr. Oso. Cheers. So, let's break it down for you. Number one, the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Um, if you do not know early David Bowie music, do yourself a favor, check it out. It, it was a struggle, actually, between the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars and Hunky Dory, both of which are absolutely classic, brilliant albums. Um, early David Bowie was hugely influential on me. When I was in ninth grade, I think I started listening to him. And I was, I was totally, totally captivated. I think he's brilliant. He's a huge influence on music in the 80s. And uh, Let's see, number two. This is one that a lot of people might not know. Uh, Jimmy Cliff, The Harder They Come. It's a soundtrack album to the movie they Hard The Harder They Come, which is kind of a silly little gangster exploitation. It's kind of a junky movie, but it's an absolutely brilliant album. It's all... It's reggae. It's all like classic reggae. Jimmy Cliff is on there. You got the song Rivers of Babylon. Some of you may know. By the rivers of Babylon Where we sat down And then we went When we remembered Zion For the wicked carried us away Kept TV. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's based on the Psalms. So if you're an atheist, you hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's based on the Bible. Oh! But it's actually a great song. Uh, that's on there. Pressure Drop is on there. Pressure Drop. Oh, pressure. Oh, yeah. Pressure got the drop on me. Because it's a pressure drop. Classic. There's brilliant songs on there. Toots and the Maytales. Um, Jimmy Cliff. Who else is on there? I forget his name. Uh, right off the top of my head. Oh, many Rivers to Cross is on there. Many Rivers to Cross But I can't seem to find my way over Wandering I'm lost Yeah, that's on there. So that's a brilliant album. That's number two. Let's see what we're doing on time. I don't want to make these too long. Because you don't like to hear me talk that much. That's why. Make them about seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes. Um, what was number three? Number three, The Wall. Pink Floyd, The Wall. <laughs> yeah. Bodies flown across the ocean, leaving just a memory. Snapshot in the family album. Daddy, what else did you leave for me? Daddy, what you leave behind for me? Brilliant album. Uh, when I was in high school, I was obsessed with it. Uh, we, we memorized it. We used to sing it like every weekend, me and my friends. And we'd go see the stoner midnight showings of it. Um... I haven't listened to it in a long time, but this was the key word here was influence. When I was in high school, it was like it was practically my Bible. That was before I had the real Bible. Um, the, you know, Pink Floyd was like I even played the movie The Wall for my parents. I, sw I swear to God, I said, you know, if you want to understand me, here, watch this. <laughs> and my parents thought I was completely insane. Uh, needless to say. Now, number four, the, the only classic rock other than The Wall on the list is uh, Let It Bleed, The Rolling Stones. Three, for three songs, really. Three songs that I, when I was in my 20s, I couldn't stop listening to. Uh, Gimme Shelter, Let It Bleed Itself, and um, Monkey Man. Let It Bleed itself, I mean, I, for some reason that, that bore a hole in my brain. Well, we all need someone we can lean on. 
And if you want it, well, you can lean on me. Um, so that is number four, I believe. What are we up to? Number five, public enemy takes a nation of millions to hold us back. For my money, the best rap album ever made still to this day. It's nowhere near as influential as it used to be. Um, back in the day when I was listening to it, I, I, I got it in college and I, I, I memorized it. I mean, yeah, totally, totally, completely memorized it. I'll prove it to you. Uh, how will I prove it to you? I will prove it to you. Here it is. Bam. And you say, damn, this is the dope jam. But let's define the term called dope and you're thinking me funky now. No, here is a true tale. Why the ones that deal, all the ones that fail. Yeah, you can move if you want to move. What it prove? It's here like the groove. See, told you. <laughs> I memorized the whole album. I, was, I listened to it maybe a thousand times, like 15 times a day. I was sophomore year of my college, or no, junior year of college. I uh, had a band at the time punk band and I was totally and completely obsessed with it it was hugely influential it was like nothing I'd ever heard before it was so hardcore it was so like in your face and aggressive you would play it for people and people either loved it or hated it they would they would trip out on it a lot of people would trip out on it most people didn't like it they'd be like oh what is that <laughs> stop because it's, it's so aggressive and it was so you know Chuck D would call himself the voice of power and if you listen to the album it's obvious <laughs> he was the voice of power it's in the house. Go take a shower, boy. It was so in your face. But I loved it. Um, let's see. What are we at? Uh, what did I tell you? Did I tell you? Um, um, um. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Which ones have I left out thus far? Well, that about wraps it up for today. I think I gave you those. And then I'll make a part two. Like I said, I like to keep these under 10 minutes, so there you go. That's all for now. Amen.